Thank you very much for this kind invitation. Dear friends, dear colleagues, <clears throat> I feel very much honored to be the first lecturer on this Congress. Thank you very much. And uh, <clears throat> what I want to tell you, and the subject of my lecture is today, awareness into an under-recognized entity. And um, we want to compare, that means the transalveolar ultrasonography versus radiography in the assessment of bone marrow cavitations and successful jawbone detox. Now, what we all know here in this hall is we know what jawbone cavitations are. <clears throat> this is a picture of my friend Jerry Bucot. And here you see these black holes. And the question is, what is inside these black holes? Is this air? No. Inside these black holes is a fatty degenerated substance. And so we call these cavitations, we love to give them a new medical proven name, which is called fatty degenerated osteolysis or osteonecrosis of jawbone. And we love to call it FDOJ. Only in cases where the patient has a facial pain or trigeminal neuralgia, we call it NICO. Please, uh, science is a question of terms. So please try to leave NICO, go over to FDHA, and even my friend Jerry Bocco uh, um, would propose this change in terminology. Now, the funny thing is, and this is my research for nearly 20 years now, what happens when we send these, lump, these fatty lumps, we scrape out from these jawbone cavitations, when we send these fatty lumps to labs, to modern labs, and to analyze these fatty lumps for cytokine expression. And here we have seven cytokines here, and now we have about a number of about 3,000 of these analyses. In each of these fatty lumps, we find just one inflammatory mediator highly and singularly overexpressed, and the name is Rantis. You see, our beloved TNF-alpha is very low. Our uh, TNF-alpha in these, this is a medium value of 128 patients, is just half compared to healthy jawbone. And most interesting, the interleukin-6 is only, is in healthy jawbone. Uh, 20 fold higher than in these fatty degenerated lumps. What does this mean? This means TNF alpha and interleukin 6, this gives the ignition to the local inflammation. And in these cavitations, we have no ignition to local inflammation. And this is the reason why the patient has no pain, except he has a trigeminal neuralgia, he has a facial pain. But in all other these chronic diseases, we have here in these lumps high runtis and no inflammation, no acute local inflammation. Now, this is what I'm very happy. Uh, here, this is new in this jawbone cavitations. We uh, know all these wonderful histological findings of Jerry Bucot, but now, here, with this uh, research of Rantes, here, uh, uh, Cherry Boyd's histology is now supplemented by immunology. And this is, want, uh, this is what I want. I want to invite you to an excursion to immunology on this lecture. Now, this is the story I want to tell you. The story is, here I present you a data review of a five years assessment of 1,472 patients with chronic immune diseases. Each of these patients was sick. And here, this is uh, the, the headline. This is a data review of Rantes, Rantes based immune dentistry, what we love to call it. Now, you know, chronic illnesses like cancer, heart disease, neurodegeneration, gastrointestinal issues, and autoimmune conditions are on the rise in unprecedented numbers. How is this even possible? 
What eventually are we dentists missing in this disastrous development? Now, here we have our 1,472 patients. We all here diagnosed them and controlled their therapy by these Rantis expressions I showed you. These, this cohort of 1,472 patients consisted in 15% uh, had a parasympathetic deregulation, that means high blood pressure, heart arrhythmia, 6% uh, about had tumors, 15% had trigeminal neuralgia, 17% uh, had rheumatic problems, 20% uh, had neurodegenerative or neuroinflammatory diseases like MS or ALS, 19% uh, had chronic fatigue syndrome, and about 10% uh, suffered from severe allergy symptoms. Why la do we love to call these Rantis-based immune dentistry? Now, you know, Rantis abbreviation of regulated on activation, normal T cell expressed and secreted, but the T is from T cells. That means Rantis is closely connected to our immune system, is closely connected to the T cells because T cells here are the pivot of our immune system. What is Rantis for? Rantis is a selective chemoattractant for T cells, eosinophils, and basophils. So Rantis plays an important role in recruiting leukocytes into inflammatory sites. Simply, this means everywhere, in each organ, uh, in each cellular system, you have a high Rantis induction. This organ is close to develop inflammation. Now, here we uh, again have our cohort of 1,426 patients, and I want to show you uh, how easily it is to see the relevance, the medical relevance of Rantis. Because when we check Rantis in serum, pre-surgery, in serum, the Rantis level in serum, in these 1,426 patients here, we get a result that 1,137, that means 80% of these chronic disease patients, CID patients, have already in their serum a high Rantis level, which means Rantis is in some way connected to the, their autoimmune inflammation. Now, finding Rantis high in serum opens up two questions. First, is the origin of this inflammatory Rantis signaling in the jawbone? and how to detect these runty sources and these cavitations in jawbone. And this is our answer. We measure the bone density through transalveolar ultrasonography. We call it tau. And how is the principle? The principle is very simple. Here you see an x-ray. And here you see this retromolar area here. This is number 37 in the left, left lower, uh, number 7 in Euro European counting. And this tooth here shows up in the ultrasound screen, shows up as green. Everything what is healthy jawbone, what is hard substance like a tooth or a root, shows up in green. And in red, we can see there is low density. And low density, of course, means cavitations. And cavitation, of course, means possibly fatty degenerated area where we have a high local Rantis expression. This is our uh, power machine here. The device, uh, this is the, the screen you can see. Now. How does it look <clears throat> when you use uh, our tau device uh, uh, in your practice? Here you have 
uh, a sender outside, you have a sender inside. It's very simple. The receiver inside and orally is just as big as a fingernail. So for each odonton you want to check, you have one screen. So extra oral the sender, in oral we have the receiver and the ultrasound wave goes through the alveolar bone, it goes through, and the receiver picks up the attenuation of the sound wave and shows it in a picture, green or red. So it's very simple. Again, <clears throat> how is the clinical outcome? Again, this picture with red. When we open this area, <clears throat> we make a window. Here we have the window. And these cavitation, this cavitation here is totally filled up with fatty degenerated substance. We scrape it out. We don't need a burr. We just need a drill to open the window. Okay, But this is all soft to scrape out. And here you see how it looks like, how the morphology of these fatty lumps look like. And here at the bottom of this um, um, odonton, you see the transalveolar nerve, totally naked, unprotected. And of course, in case you have these fatty lumps around there, there is inflammation taking part in this trigeminal nerve. Now, most interesting is how is the post-surgery Runtis finding? That means how high are the Runtis levels in these 1,472 jawbone samples we took out? And uh, normal, the normal range here of Runtis in healthy jawbone is about 149 picograms per milliliter. And interestingly, only five of these 1,472 fatty lumps we took out by the surgery, only five were below the threshold of 149. Five of these 1,472 is only 0.35% were below the uh, healthy threshold. All the other ones were high above with a medium level of 2,200 picograms per milliliter. 2,207 2, picograms per milliliter is about 14.7 fold higher than normal. That means a, f uh, a nearly 15-fold higher chronic induction, 15-fold uh, higher chronic signal, develop inflammation, develop inflammation, develop inflammation through these, this Ranti's signaling. Now, did you know that cancer, diabetes, heart disease, strokes are all inflammation-based illnesses? And we presume, or we ask, are they most likely Runtis based? And the search for literature in PubMed shows you, you type in Runtis allergy, and for these two short search terms, you get 1,055 scientific articles. For Runtis and neurodegenerative disorders, you get 116. For Runtis rheumatism, you get 167. And for Runtis and tumors, you get 743 articles. That means at least 743 um, scientists tried to find out where is the connection from Runtis to the development of tumors. And this literature research is our ethical and medical basis for the search for Runtis expressing jawbone cavitations. And we do this. The search is, basic, is uh, primarily by this ultrasound. And what we did on, this, on these in the last five years, 
on these 1,472 CID patients, we did 53,000 tau scans. So you see, this machine is really well experienced. So here we have these 1,072 patients, 53,000 uh, tau scans. The rule is nine scans per odonton. So uh, 37 divided by nine is three. That means each of these 1,472 CID patients detected in our research, in our clinic, detected three positive FDOJ cavitations in tau. Three in each of these patients. Now, what does this result show? It shows, first, three jawbone areas with the diminished bone density per CID patients. Three jawbone areas with Rantis overexpression per CID patient. And in our cohort of these 1,472 patients, Rantis is the biomarker, or you can say it's the fingerprint of local, but also of systemic inflammation for each of these CID patients. And the conclusion is, Rantis in jawbone cavitations is obviously epidemic in patients with chronic immune diseases. Now, we all are working in our clinics and our practices, so I want to show you a case study. This is a lady, she has uh, neurodermatitis for six years. The treatment up to now was mostly cortisone. You see her skin, this is her, her arm, and this is her, her face. <clears throat> um, we already published this research on a scientific paper. Uh, this was six weeks ago. And up, up to now, we have 2,650 downloads on this paper of this uh, publication of this research. So this lady came to us. What did we do? We make an X-ray, of course, and we check this X-ray, this OPG. We check this by our cavitao, by our ultrasound scans for chronic inflammation. And here you see the, uh, the OPG, and here below you see the outprint of the ultrasound. And I want to focus your attention to this area here. This is a titanium implant. But amazingly, around this wonderful titanium implant here, we have many, many red spots. So we presume that here we have a chronic inflammation around this inflammation. This is the magnification of these uh, tau scans. You see here the green, of course. The green is a hard substance. This is the titanium implant in green. But directly around, you found these red spots. So we have around this implant, here it's in white, in the three-dimensional uh, projection, we have here this inflammation. Now, as this patient had an autoimmune disease, we presumed these red spots are the inflammation um, some way connected to her disease. We took out the implant, and here you clearly can easily can see the fatty degenerated bone around the implant. And when we scrape out this fat, and we send this to the lab for Rantis analysis, we get here, directly at the implant, we get a chronic inflammation, Rantis-driven inflammation, with 6,174 picograms per milliliter, in contrast to the healthy uh, level of Rantis. So here we see the FDOJ clearly. Now, <clears throat> let's go to the right lower. Um, uh, jawbone of this patient, and here you see the area here, the retromolar area. Again, here it's red here. This is the magnification, so we presume also here is a high uh, rantus inflammation. And when we take clean up all these in this patient, when we clean up all these retromolar areas, we get a medium level of 2,000 and 69 picograms rantis instead of 949. And this is the wonderful thing. 
with our tau machine with our ultrasound device we can check after we cleaned out the all these cavitations after we restored their um, uh, their teeth with ceramic implants we can check we can check did we really were we really successful in cleaning out these jawbone cavitations were we really success, successful in cleaning out this, these local Ranti's overexpressions. And you see here the control, it's all green. So there are nearly nowhere are chronic Ranti's driven inflammation remaining. And this is the clinical outcome when you succeed. No? You see the face before and you see her face after. This is like, uh, uh, yeah, daughter and grandmother or something like this. <clears throat> now, why did we have this success? Science knows the connection between neurodermatitis and Rantis expression. And I'm just citing here two papers out of uh, uh, 89 papers here. Number one, there was a significant association between the upregulating variant of Rantis genes and atopic dermatitis. These results support a role for Rantis promoter polymorphism in susceptibility to atopic dermatitis. So why not search for cavitations? Why not search for local Rantis expressions in jawbone in all patients with this horrible atopic dermatitis? Or number two, these results suggest that Rantis, as well as its receptors, CCR3 and CCR5, may play important roles in the orchestration in ongoing chronic inflammation in atopic eczema and also reflect the severity of this disease. So what we did is measuring bone density with a scientific proven method. And we are connecting the patient's immune disease just with these scientific proven local Rantis overexpression. This is not quackery, and uh, uh, this is not a, a mystic vision I am uh, presenting you here. Question, is this a single case, or could our approach to CID be a new immune dentistry through tau, through ultrasonography, and in combination um, to jawbone detox of these Rantis overexpression. And to show you a short market survey of our clinic, here, this was, we asked uh, 289 patients, gave us the answers. I'm under, the, the question was, under, I'm under the impression that my health improved significantly due to the FTOJ surgery. And here we have 52% strongly agree and 20% uh, agree. So. 70% of these patients we treated by jawbone detox. And by jawbone detox after ultrasonography, we have here 70% success. This is amazing. And asking the patients the, uh, uh, the question, I found the possibility of performing tau ultrasonography of my jawbone to be very good and good. We have 90%. Why do we get 90% agreement? We get 90% agreement because all these patients come with 5 to 10 to 15 x-rays and nobody's doing anything. And nobody's finding all these local Rantis overexpressions in jawbone by these x-rays. So they are so happy that here is somebody who is taking another method, ultrasound, a totally harmless, non-ionizing meson. Yeah? We know harmless, uh, ultrasound is harmless. Uh, babies <laughs> uh, are all uh, getting the ultrasound. Yeah. Now, back to my subtitle. My subtitle is Transalveolar Ultrasonography versus Radiography in the Assessment of Chawbone. The, what I want to show you is why tau is superior in the assessment of jawbone around implants. Case one, this is a patient chronic facial pain after implant. And um, <clears throat> this patient got this implant. 
ceramic implant, wonderful crown, external sinus lift, perfect. Implant is well osseointegrated, but for six months now, she has facial pain. And uh, all other treating dentists are hopeless. They don't know. What can we do? Of course, the patient has pain, so we make a CBCT. Ease this CBCT here with the frontal uh, cut and here the, uh, the, sec the sagittal uh, cut. Is the CBCT able to display any problems? Can you interpret this CBCT properly? Of course not, uh, because we know we have these uh, deviation of the, um, of the uh, uh, X-ray beams here. But in contrast to the CBCT, you see below, here you see around the implant in green, this is the bigger one, we have directly here these red spots. That means directly here around the implant, here we have a chronic inflammation. And this chronic inflammation, of course, might be due to or the cause of, this, of, her, of her facial pain. Now we take out the implant. We s scrape out these red spots and we send it to the pathologist. The pathologist is finding here an apical granuloma and he is finding fibrous connective tissue around the apical area of the ceramic implant. Additionally, we send a part of this bone to the lab for Runtis analysis. And what is the outcome? The outcome is this should be, and it is 1,587 picograms. So we have about a tenfold higher Runtis expression apically at this wonderful osseointegrated ceramic implant. So histology and Runtis multiplex measurement of this apical peri-implant tissue confirms our ultrasonography measurement. And it confirms, on the other side, the lack of visualization of the inflammatory area with OPG and CBCT. Case number two, also chronic facial pain. Here we have a number four. Again, you see the CBCTs here. <clears throat> this, is, this would be mystic yeah, to interpret it here, something. But what you can see here distally from this implant, you can see the red spots here on our ultrasound device. Taking out the implant, sending the tissue to the pathologist, here we get here uh, chronic and florid inflammation. And the pathologist even finds uh, um, a radical, a radical assist would be conceivable. But in this case, the Rantis, this is overwhelming, the Rantis shows 13,450 picograms per milliliter. This is about 100, 100 fold higher than normal. And so this implant here is probably not only creating f local facial pain, it's probably also creating, I remind you to the literature research, tumors, rheumatic di uh, diseases, uh, autoimmune diseases, and so on. Now, the next one is transalveolar ultrasonography versus radiography in the assessment of jawbone. Why is tau superior in the assessment of jawbone on root fillings and post-endodontic inflammations? Again, some uh, examples. Here you have a root filling. Look at this area here, here CBCT. Huh. Is this a, are these two, uh, two X-rays a reason to extract this root filling? Probably not. But when we make the, uh, when you look at the ultrasound here, you see it's not all green. Healthy tooth here is green. Healthy tooth here. here you see it's red, it's softened. And when you take out the tooth, scrape out the, um, um, the apical tissue, here we get a Rantes expression of 6,172. So this root filling is definitely a source of chronic Rantes overexpression. And chronic Rantes overexpression may be 
possibly a reason for the epistemology of tumors, of allergies, of rheumatic diseases. Second case, here again, root filling. We see a little overfilling here. But impressively, healthy tooth is green. This tooth is red again. Here, red and yellowish, here. Taking out this tooth. Here, this area is marked by a contrast medium. The bone was totally soft. We could scrape out easily this area, send a sample of this area to the lab, and the result is 9,972 around this expression. So it's a chronic focus proven and by uh, the lab analysis of this Arantis expression. And you see it's always the same here. TNF-alpha is low, interleukin, uh, interleukin 10 is low, interleukin 6 is low. It's all low, except Arantis. So it, it, uh, it seems that here in the, inside the jawbone and we dentists are at a certain point and a very specific sort of inflammation. And this is the specifically Arantes-driven inflammation in jawbone. So I come to my conclusion. In cavitations, we find chronic singular Arantes overexpression. Second, Arantes has a well-known high interference to overall health. This knows literature. This is not my personal idea. Our data proves <clears throat> Sorry. Our data proves an epidemic spread of FDOJ pathologies, at least in these 1,472 patients with chronic immune diseases. And in contrast to the standard X-ray diagnostics, our transalveolar ultrasonography displays well cavitations accessible for a successful jawbone detox. Well, here at the table, I put you a little booklet. These are 21 scientific papers. We, uh, our Munich research team, we published. Uh, and on these um, 21 scientific papers, up to now, we have more than 150,000 international readers. This is well acknowledged and well accepted science. It's all PubMed. Uh, uh, indexed. And second, um, we brought a book, or you, here you find some uh, sheets to order the book. This is the book Cavitational Osteonecrosis in Chawbone in English. It's 380 page, pages, I warn you, but with 800 pictures. All those pictures I showed you in my lecture are, you, you find in this book. Or uh, at the exhibition hall, uh, we have some books available for you. Now, <clears throat> my personal message is rethinking and awareness are necessary so that we as dentists are accepted as the ones who have found new ways to treat people with chronic immune diseases. And I do not want to be the crazy man who does this for years and years and without sharing it with the world. Thank you. I'm, <laughs> And I'm the, one, <clears throat> I'm the one of those who, just one of those. <clears throat> we have many uh, presidents. We have uh, Cherry Bucco and other, uh, or Boyd Haley. Um, uh, I'm just one of those who scientifically proved uncountable times that Tau provides us with a diagnostic tool leading us to ultrasonography, leading us to an ultrasonography-guided jawbone detox which was not possible before. Thank you so much. All right. You got, you have 20 more minutes. You want to keep going? You have 20 more minutes. You want to go? I have 20 more minutes. Or, or could we ask questions or? I suppose I know, oh, where's Randall? He's not here. Does anybody, we do have some time. So does anybody have any questions? So will you be here for the Q&A later anyway? You're going to stick around tonight? Yes, yes. Okay, good. Course, All right. I'm available. I'm available. Here, let me bring the microphone to you. Okay. Thank you. How long did the female patient with the dermatitis take to resolve her symptoms? 
excuse me, a chest <laughs> again. again. Um, how long did it take for the female patient, the dermatitis case, for her symptoms to resolve after you treated her? Um, uh, you mean uh, how long was the time uh, between treating her and getting the positive result? Yes. In this case, it was very short. But this is not standard. We have low re uh, slow responders and we have fast responders. Yeah. We have very, uh, very ma uh, many fast responders in uh, curing facial pain. This is very quickly. What is fast? Of course, in tumors, we don't know. Yeah. Right, what is fast and what is slow relative in your practice? Uh, fast means uh, uh, two days later, three days later. Oh, wow. Okay. And slow means six months later. Wow, okay. Yeah. Thank you. She was very fast, this lady. Awesome. That's amazing. Okay. All right. Okay. Ah, I forgot my <laughs> now, Mike, you're going to make me run back there? My gosh. She, do me a favor, yeah, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Lenny, real quickly okay. here. We have to do this legally. Uh, he has a disclaimer to read. Any of our presenters have to do the disclaimer. It was actually buried under the computer. So please read that for me so I don't get in trouble. I have to read that. Yes, you can. Yes, yes. My God. I do not have any financial interest of a product in my talk or with any companies offering grant monies for this continuing dental and medical education program. Very good. That's fine? <laughs> yep. Thank you, Dr. Lechner. Um, my first question is, uh, what labs in the United States provide Rantis testing? And the second is, um, what can we do as practitioners to ensure that the cleanup lasts the patient's long, lifelong and the DOJ doesn't come back? Yeah, I go to the second part of your question because this is a very good question. Um, we never know. <clears throat> Uh, what happens in five years, in ten years. As jawbone cavitations are a problem of the metabolism inside the jawbone. So in case the, let's say, the calcium or vitamin D metabolism of this patient is really bad and stays bad, these cavitations will come up. And honestly, we have to, to redo these surgeries uh, some years later again in about 20 to 25 percent of our patients. But this is due to the immune system, to the met metabolism of the patient. This is not why we work badly. Yeah? And sometimes these symptoms come up years later. But this is what uh, already Cherry Bucot is writing in his book, which was published in, published in 1986. Yeah? Also, facial pain might come up. And then we do the surgery again. Yeah? But where, what is uh, the alternative to do uh, local anesthesia and to do a job on surgery for 30 or 40 minutes compared to have chronic facial pain? Why not? Uh, or taking chronic painkillers? The lab? Well, no, this is a lab in Berlin. We have two, uh, in, in Germany, we have two labs uh, accessible for our research, one in Munich, one in Berlin. But uh, I'm sure this machine we use is from Merck, built in Austin, Texas. So I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure you have these machines. And uh, analysis of cytokines, and we have about uh, 28 or 29 cytokines inside the body, this is the clue for medicine, and I'm sure you, you, f you find a lab who does that here. So you don't know of any labs, right? No, no, I don't know one here. No, we have one in, in Germany. But the problem is, just to tell you, when you send these fatty samples to a lab for these cytokine analysis, cool it down, freeze it down, immediately after you scraped out the fat from the jawbone. Then you keep it in the fridge, doesn't matter. And then you send it to the lab, also chilled down. Because otherwise, the runtis gas is off. It's gone. You have no runtis anymore in your fat. Well, I'm glad to have you back for, the, I think, the third or fourth time you're with our organization. But my question was, and you kind of answered a little bit of it with, uh, as far as what to look for, well, how, to, how to set that patient up for a successful surgery. We know from Dr. Gulick from the University of Cincinnati School of, uh, it was Children's Hospital, worked with the Dr. Bob McMahon, and that was just prior to Dr. Boku, that they found about 35% of the population had a hyperfibrolytic disorder, okay? 
Now, are you looking at nitric oxide levels on these patients? Are you looking at vitamin D levels? What are you doing to supplement these patients and get them in a good situation so yeah. you don't have to potentially go back this, and redo a, sur a surgery? This is an excellent question. To answer this question properly, uh, is even in these 20 remaining minutes too much? <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> this is the reason what I try to show you is to diagnose and to do this jawbone detox under the terminology of maxillar, maxillomandibular osteoimmunology. But this maxillomandibular osteoimmunology is only part of what we call it integrative oral medicine. And of course, looking at the patient's, let's say, psycho-emotional situation, looking at the patient's vitamin D level and so on and so on and so on, is part of this integrative oral medicine. Yeah. But as you saw, uh, there are many, many specialists. Yeah. I'm not a specialist in that, but I'm a specialist in, a specialist in finding these cavitations and in propagating uh, this ultrasound-guided jawbone detox and in doing the scientific background for that. So we have no reasons and we have no fear to be sued by uh, our dental boards or whatever it is. Other questions? Oh, okay. Gotta get more. Make a good question. <laughs> I wanted you to speak to the fact that the jawbone is unique in that displaying of rantus. You said other other bones in the body. Yeah. Maybe you the, could explain that. No, yeah, it's, it's a good question because, uh, of course, we find inflammatory cytokine patterns also here in the belly fat. Yeah? You know, we should not have uh, too much belly fat. Yeah? But this here is TNF-alpha. Yeah? And this here is interleukin-6 and interleukin-8, which will kill you. It's not Runtis. Yeah? But this fat here is singularly with this Runtis overexpression. All right. Okay. We got one more. We got time for just one more anyway. Thank you very much. What percentage of... Uh, root canals that look pretty decent on the CT scan show on the tau, and what percentage of those uh, show high rantis? Well, uh, from my experience, it depends on two uh, issues. Number one is <clears throat> you need a really good CBCT. Optimum is with uh, Hounsfield units, uh, measurement of the scale. And second is in case you are familiar with these cavitations, you see more. Yeah. But we have CBCT, uh, CBT, CBCT findings from radiologists and say, see, don't see anything. <laughs> and this is the fact, you know. And besides, it's a question of uh, uh, protection of our inner environment. Yeah. Radiation, radiation, radiation. Oh my God. Yeah. I want to be healthy inside my body. So I would prefer ultrasound. Uh, for instance, I had an ultrasound uh, check for my heart. This is just wonderful. Uh, OK. All right. Well, one here, hold on. What percentage of those root canals show rantis, high rantis? Now, the root canals itself don't show the rantis. But uh, there is a lot of literature, and we can prove this with ultrasound. You have these post-endotontic infections or inflammations around the apical area inside the jawbone. Yeah. Uh, this inflammation is just the reaction on the, on the box and on the toxins, on these uh, volatile sulfur toxins. OK. All righty. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. making the long flight all the way over from Europe for that.